about to pick up a car that I bought two years ago. I show up uh, an hour and a half late and I brought the crappiest car to the meet. This is incredible. I'm the only person here. And you're lucky you made it, huh? Probably one of your worst uh, adult decisions you've ever made. Welcome back to the show that's not a show but is slowly becoming a show. On today's episode, you get a lot of me. So if you don't like me, you should probably watch something else. <laughs> Yo, this dude seriously just sent a 1986 Pontiac Fiero GT Project Lamborghini Countach. No, you should definitely cop that. That is probably the worst purchase we've ever made. So yeah, go for it. Yo, what? Shut the fuck up. We're trying to make a show here. What are you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just do your thing. There's plenty of us here. Yo, a $35,000 1995 Volkswagen Corrado Storm? The market ain't ready for that. Word? Hold on a second. Posted 20 minutes ago. So this is something to jump on. Focus, mother... So this episode actually starts like almost two years ago. When one night, while we're still kind of mid-pandemic, I bought a car that wasn't in the United States and then forgot about it and then had to go pick it up last December. This is a modern love story about a boy and an old shitty Audi with some rust spots on it, but with a lot of charm. Along the way, the car breaks a ton, as you would expect. I find myself, I lose myself. I even learned how to fly a drone for the first time, which you would think is something I would have learned at this point, but I have other people to do that stuff. And then I end up going to a really sketchy section of California that I didn't know existed called the Lost Coast, which is apparently where a bunch of people get murdered. Actually, the more I think about it, I don't even know if you guys should watch this because like if you're not enjoying this intro, there's less excitement in the episode, but somehow more of me, which is a weird math if you look around the room. So uh, enjoy the episode. Clearly no one else at Hoonigan did because they're not even here to film this episode with us. And I hope you guys don't like this because then they're going to keep making us do this. And it, it's really not good for Scotto's mental state to break into all the different characters that force Scotto to buy cars at 2 o'clock in the morning. All right, it's just past uh, 8.30 and I'm just checking out of my airport hotel in Vancouver and uh, we're about to embark on a mission. I'm about to pick up a car that I bought two years ago and the previous owner was nice enough to hold it for me this whole time. And then once I pick it up, immediately head back to the States, clear customs, start a nice little long road trip all the way back to California. Here we go. Hope you don't mind being on camera. Ed, Eddie, what, what, what's best? Eddie? Eddie, nice to meet you, man. Right, nice to finally meet you. This is the extremely friendly Canadian who's been holding my vehicle for entirely too long. It's the I brought East, you a present. It's Canadian hospitality, that's it. It really is, and the, the weather is perfect. To be today. fair, you know, you are picking up a Quattro, so it'll be more fun with snow. That's what I was hoping for. I was hoping a little Canadian yeah. snow to break it in. I so. mean, when some do so. <laughs> All right, let's go see this thing. All right, load it up. You know you're in Canada when you get greeted with a nice cup of Tim Hortons. Thanks, the way, bud. The way we do it. This is a real. This is a real Canadian treat. Is there That's any the other like van? I, there's a little snow. Yeah, there's a little snow right there. Is there anything else like I have to have in Vancouver? Like when I go to Montreal, I have to have poutine. Mm -hmm. Like what's the Vancouver thing? Like what's what's the specialty? Sushi. Here? Oh really? Sushi. Some of the best sushi in the world here. It's a little early in the morning for raw fish. Yeah, 10 a.m. sushi. <laughs> All right, here we are. Moment of truth. Is it everything I want it to be? Is it a rust bucket? Or is it going to be just an perfect enough for a 1500 mile trip home? And will I fit in the seat well enough that I don't have to break my back? By the way, if you want to hear how bad I scumbagged this dude into this situation, he lived somewhere else when I bought this car. Oh, Actually, October. I want to hear your story okay. of this exchange because I don't even remember all the details. So you messaged me on Marketplace one day and it was like two in the morning. I guess you were in Germany filming the car can abroad. And I was oh, like, well, was I, I, see, I see this name pop up. I'm like, Brian's got, what the? And I was like, okay, that's weird. How uh, we get chatting? Buys the car. So I got the my first car probably early November, late October of last year. That's okay, because I thought it was two years. Oh, so it's coming. That's it's coming only up. one year. Well, only, only 16 months. So I sell this car to you. I take the money that I got from this, 
I put it into a W210 Mercedes E, nice. e class, you know, just the nice land barge you get to and from work. That car got written off because someone hit it. And then I got another. So in the span of to take a pick up this car, I've been through three. <laughs> and two houses because yeah, you live somewhere exactly, else. Exactly, two houses. <laughs> Buy from Canadians. They will store cars for you. They'll pick you up from the airport. I mean, this is this is this is this is great. You got some parts here too. Uh, this is one of three boxes. Oh. That that, and also have two more boxes downstairs. Oh um, man! All right, we'll see how much of that actually makes its way. <laughs> and down. ah, but the PSL resistance. Uh, the car's also filled with parts. Great. So I also brought a ton of bags with me. Clutch, flywheel. So yeah. I love that I showed up to something that's a project just to get it out of the driveway. <laughs> Although it runs and drives. Yes. Yeah. Sweet. Starts starts right up. I have CIS, not, never had an issue with it. And it's got a roof rack, which is great. Yeah. Man, so, old school Volvo. I think these are actually toolies. Yeah, they are. Old school Volvo uh, spec ones. <laughs> Nice. Uh, full glass. There's a full set of glass that's beside the front. We don't have a, front, a spare front okay. windshield, but this isn't cracked. It's in perfect condition. More struts. Uh, another stock. Yeah, this is like buying a wheel. car for me. It's like looking in a mirror, only not. Yep. Oh boy! All right, we got some. We got some. <laughs> got uh, we got some Tetris to do. Yeah. <laughs> This exactly. one, this one doesn't open. No. Nope. Okay. Oh, there's none on this side either. <laughs> oh man, none of the door handles open. Oh, this is gonna be a long trip. <sighs> so that's the only one that opens. This one. That's the only yes. one. Now, as of last week, yes. So if that one breaks, I'm pretty boned. Uh, okay, I will definitely be fixing the driver's side door handle at some point on this trip. Is there I, of all the parts? Let me guess. There's no door handles. Oh uh, yeah, no. I, I asked Dave. He's like, I don't know. No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> what have I gotten myself into? So uh, just as we finished packing up, the only working and operational door handle broke. So we're repairing that real quickly. Some friends have shown up. Introduce yourself, friend. What up? What's going on? And very unlike me, I've decided to leave <laughs> all these spare parts behind. So if you want them and you watch this before they're gone, me DM me and <laughs> you can come get them from his house. All right, now I finished fixing this door handle. All right, that's it. I sorted through all the extra junk he tried to send me home with. And we fixed the door handle, kind of. It's pretty sketchy. Basically, the rule is gonna be I can never have all four doors closed at the same time. Not really sure how that's gonna work. Looks like we'll be doing some maintenance tonight. Find someone who's got some B2 handles. And uh, yeah, anyway, guys, thank you. Pleasure. Take care. Thank have you. Fun. I'll let you know how the border goes. Yeah, please do. So, here we go. Thank you, go. buddy. See you, Brian. I'll see you. Okay, so uh, I'm now in secondary. So I just got through. Um, the guy at the booth was hilarious because the car was smoking. I was like sitting there revving it because it seemed like the alternator might be slipping and the battery was running low. He's like, you just bought this? He's like, why? I was like, I'm gonna be honest with you. I was really afraid I was gonna push it towards the booth. So, so far, so good. Let's go inside and see if we can get these things stamped. And uh, then, I don't know, we'll see how far this thing goes before, uh, before I gotta AAA it to someone's shop and fix a few must needed items. That's it, we got the stamp cleared from customs. That's uh, two in uh, two days. Good again? I'm good. Yes, sir. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man, appreciate you guys. How rad is that? <laughs> Pays to be Hoonigan, Please. the border. And the dude said, what's up, Brian? <laughs> yeah. There you go, welcome to the United States of America. Feels good to be home, although I've only been gone for less than uh, 12 hours. Good thing is, is this looks like it's working again. I tightened the terminal and all the customs guys had a good laugh of me fixing the car in secondary. But uh, we're back on the road. Let's see how long we stay back on the road. But anyway, um, we're about running about an hour late to this meet that uh, my buddy put together. And uh, we're out. hopefully we get there, get some food, catch up with a bunch of other Audi dudes. One thing about the Audi community you gotta understand is it's actually really big in the Pacific Northwest as well as like the New England area. And the reason for that is like that's the section of the world 
where you need things like Quattro, or it's actually at least in the United States where you need things like Quattro. So I've known a lot of these guys, and I've talked to a lot of these guys on message forums for, I don't know, you know, the past 20 years, and I've never actually met them, or some of them I've met, you know, once or twice. So I've added a little face to a name or a username. So I show up uh, an hour and a half late and it's raining, but all these people are here, which is pretty rad. And I brought the crappiest car to the meet. What's up everybody? You guys waiting long? By the way, I definitely parked next to the car that my wife wish I was bringing home instead. This is like her dream car. Nice little uh, Coupe Quattro S2 swap looks like. All right, so we've known each other on the internet for what? 20, 15, 20 years, 18 like years, that, yeah. right? Old motor gate guys. It's kind of cool. This was like, this was the whole reason I wanted to take this trip, was to be able to come and actually see guys who I've talked to on the internet and actually see their stuff in person. Hell yeah. This place was literally six minutes from the uh, meet we just had. Wow. This is cool, this is cool, this is cool, this is cool, but I definitely came here for this. How you doing, I'm Brian. Dima. Nice to meet you. This is, this is you? Oh, I love it. Okay. Oh, wow. That is very nice. I made the support for Turbo, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is you? This is you? Yes. Is you? yes. Oh, it looks really nice. It's yeah, titanium. Yeah, I was gonna say. A little titanium work in there. That looks nice. How long have you had it for? 2015, maybe. Oh, really? How much power will this make? I think I'm stop around 800 wheels. 800? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's more than plenty. Well, but it's where, are you guys, where are you guys originally from? Russia. Yeah, Russia, Latvia, all these places love the old Audi. I feel like that's where you're the only this place you can find like parts now. childhood. Yeah. It's like from Michel Vuitton, this is from Group B. This yep. came from this, yeah. and actually we have a lot. For me, it's, it's like, I know it's many people just like, oh, GTR, this R34, this is like, Ultima in Russia. <laughs> Man, this dude just said some truth. I used to call GTR's Tudor Ultimas all the time. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you just say? Wouldn't be a proper Hoonigan road trip if you weren't swapping out a part on your car. Well, we were leaving and I knew I had a little bit of a charging issue, which I thought went away from the terminal, but we just checked it with the multimeter and uh, it was not just a terminal issue. So Dima and the guys here were nice enough to let me replace the once really nice car that was sitting here <laughs> with this because he also owns a B2 Audi and travels with a bunch of spare parts in his car because that's what you do. And how far are you away from home? Half hour. Yeah, that's, that's Audi life for you. <laughs> All right, so like I said, we've got spare ones. And this actually isn't out of an Audi, is no. it? No, what's it out of? I think it's out of a Volvo. Guy and there's some it. message forum that doesn't <laughs> load photos anymore that told you that these are the same part numbers, right? Roughly. Yeah, yeah pretty yeah. much. So I pulled this out, and that wear definitely does not look even. No. So we're thinking that might be our problem is the voltage regulator. Service here is great. I was saying the Canadians were really friendly, but you, uh, you Seattle folk, great. I was totally expecting on, I was going to troubleshoot this in your yard tomorrow morning. So, by the way, this is Justin. He was the one that not only put together the meet today, but if it wasn't for you, there probably wouldn't have been Jim Connor 9, because you were at Forts at the time, and you right. saved our ass. And then on top of that, if it wasn't for you, there wouldn't be a Hoonigan DLC pack. That's true. Yeah. He's your real hero, people, not me. Wait, are you kidding? Did you just we? I pulled this is all in the trunk of these people's cars. <laughs> this is what Audi life is like. This is what they travel with. This there's now three alternators. Mine's still in my car. This one, these are just the three that came out. So this one has a bad bearing. So maybe that one's a good one there. Should be good. We'll see. Just came out of my car like two weeks ago. 
<laughs> Look today. at that one. Ooh, might be a winner. Oh. Yeah. Look at how oh. long those boys are. Yeah, and now what do we got? What do we got before? Yeah. Compare oh, that. yeah. Yep. There that's go. that's gonna work. All right, let's clean it up and swap awesome. it in. We forgot to film that. Everyone get excited again. <laughs> Pretend to get excited. We have 13 Look watts. Look at that. Oh, thank you guys. That, that made me think. Thanks, bud. So you, you tell me you enjoyed it. The nostalgia, right? This is why, this is why I work in slime just like that. My finger is remember this. Oh, thank yeah. you, sir. Thank you very much. Now you get to keep your overpriced alternator. Yeah. <laughs> uh, awesome. Be an Audi guy. Good. Thank you guys. So yesterday was a good day. Uh, cleared customs, got to the get together that Justin put together for me. That was fantastic. And then last night, the, first, the folks at German Auto House uh, helped me diagnose and fix my charging problem. So that's better now. And on the way here from there, the car started to spike, kind of overheated, light came on. You can see pissed a little coolant. It smells like rust. I hope there's no oil in it because that would be the end of the trip. Looking in there, that is, that's a nice color. That is a nice rusty complexion. But it doesn't, it just smells like coolant. It doesn't smell like oil, which is good. It was recommended that maybe I shorten this um, just so I don't get like, have like a low spot in it. So maybe shorten that a little bit. I'm wondering if there's maybe a little bit of an issue with the cap, but it's probably low because pissed a bunch out last night, but we'll fill it up. Hopefully that's our problem. If not, I do have an extra radiator. It's the one thing I did take as a spare. Today, the plan is to chill. The whole point of this trip for me was to take a little bit of a break. I've never been to the uh, Washington or Oregon coast, so gonna check that out. Yeah, on the way, stop by a guy who seems to be a pretty big Audi herder who's got some uh, parts I need. I've been talking to you for a while, so I wanna go pick those parts up. Yeah. Good. Hey, Rons, baby. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> All right. See you later. Care. All right, and we're off. All right, so we're here. Justin said you'll know it when you drive past. I think you take my uh, my car cane addiction to a whole other level. How many cars do you have? Uh, 15, and then my son has five. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and you got a lot of Avants, huh? Yeah. 200, so you are and a that's large a body's your thing. Yeah. The red is uh, a 5,000, that's my son's. Man, you're the guy saving them all. I, you know, it's a, it's a bad habit to start because it's hard to stop, you know? So I've been looking for parts to convert my 20 valve uh, wagon. <laughs> to V8 look and I was just missing one fender. He's like, I have one, but I gotta go pull it. And I was like, you know what? I'm actually gonna be driving right past you. So I might as well stop by, pick it up, save the shipping on it. So, but also look at all the cool stuff here. Can we look at that? This is like in really nice condition. It's it's pretty darn nice. And you said it's a 20 valve? It's a 20 valve, yeah, 91, 20 valve. Um, I mean, how many, do you know how many Lago Blue ones got made? Vons. I wanna say it was like 18, but don't quote me now. Um, yeah, I, I've only seen like six of them that I think still exist. And this is the one you have for this, sale. Yeah, yeah, Man, this, this color is so good. It's so good. I completely, amazing. on the way here, Justin said, hey, are you still interested in looking at the at the Ur I have for sale? Otherwise, you know, I could just meet you out, you know, on the road. And I was like, no, I'm not really in the market. And I completely changed my mind seeing it in person. The color is so good. Well, this and Lago to me are so close, but yeah. also so different. Like this is way more green. This mm -hmm. is way more blue. God, not this again. All right, so on the mission, obviously picked up a car, but also picking up parts along the way for other projects. So I got my all red 
V8 tails for my Avant wagon, which doesn't look anywhere near as nice as that one. So, and if we can find uh, another fender and grab that too, and maybe a couple other prevention parts for the 4,000, but sweet. This is one of many stops to buy parts for other Audis, not this Audi, in addition to buying parts for this Audi. Also maybe some Volkswagen parts too. Honestly, I'm slightly impressed. It's been day two before I had to stop at an auto parts store. Um, fans not turning on, uh, check the fuse, that's not the problem. Check the relay, that might be the problem. Um, when I say I checked it, I looked to see how old it was and it looked new, but it also looked cheap. So uh, I'm gonna go pick up a relay. Hopefully they'll have a fan switch here too. And uh, yeah, just get a bunch of parts. The car is obviously hot, so if I have to do the fan switch, I'm gonna wait till it cools down. So I might as well just drive to my destination for today and get some parts. Plus I don't think my multimeter works, so pick up some stuff like that. Worst comes to worst, fan, hot wired, directly to the battery, as long as the fan works. But maybe a switch. Maybe not. Maybe I just pop the hood and turn it off every day. <laughs> All right, so uh, got a new relay. I installed it. I didn't really want to sit around and wait for the car to heat up just to find out it doesn't work and then the car's hot again. So I figured I'll start driving. I'll know whether or not it works or not. I'll update you. treat myself. Nothing better than seeing a movie by yourself. I know that sounds weird. When I was a kid, I never wanted to do that. But as you get older, it's just a good time. All right, <clears throat> it's the start of day three. I literally just got up, got dressed, and this is what's outside my window. I couldn't see any of that last night because it was so dark. Anyway, let's go take a look at the beach. Me, this is the official start of the drive. The whole reason that I came here, well, the reason I came here was to pick up a questionable and unreliable vehicle. Um, but I've kind of sorted through most of the gremlins. There's okay, one still thing, small little issue that it doesn't really cool itself down in traffic. I'll just avoid traffic. But yeah, I am now in Oregon uh, on the coast and this is a place I've never been to. A lot of people told me it's super beautiful. I needed to come see it. So my plan for this trip is to drive as much as I can on the coast. I do need to swing back into Portland today to visit some friends and to pick up some more Audi parts because I have a real problem. But I'm gonna try to roll the coast as long as I can, but I do have a deadline. I have to get home because it is my son's birthday and even us car cane addicts have to have boundaries. So I'm trying to get home with ample time so I'm home, home before his birthday. Anyway, let's go get on the road. Hopefully the car starts. All right, the Oregon coast so far delivers. This was so good, I had to turn around. Uh, this is Cannon Beach, which is actually a place that my uh, co-host on the Car Crash Weekly, Kellen Walker said, oh yeah, you gotta check that out, it's beautiful. He wasn't wrong. I'm trying to figure out how to get down there, but it uh, doesn't seem like that's easy. And the car is running pretty warm when I'm not moving quick. So it looks like the next thing I gotta do today is fix that. under the hood is why I came here. Britain, how you doing? Nice to see you again. All right, so uh, I didn't realize we'd actually, we met a while ago at SEMA, because when I pulled up, I was like, you look familiar. SEMA last year. And then I, I didn't put it together from Facebook conversation. So this, for me, I think is, I, I love this swap because no one loved the turbo engine that came in the, you know, the 944. So I think this was that engine that people thought, this is probably more of what should have came. Like right. a Porsche was obviously using Volkswagen Audi parts bin stuff. Why didn't they stick a five cylinder, especially a five cylinder 20 valve turbo in here? I mean, obviously timing on this would have been a 10 valve turbo, but this is, I mean, I guess you could have taken it out of a Spur Quattro, but like. And this this is actually a 924, it's a 1980 right, 924. Right. 
um, turbo, which actually was an Audi engine originally. Yeah. And so um, the bell housing for the Audi engine, the 924 Audi engine, actually fits this engine. So this is just this is how it sits, just like this. this exactly. Made new engine mounts, obviously, to adapt to right. to this car, but uh, and an oil pan. But other than that, it bolts right up. Wow. And so for this, this is a track day car for you, yeah. right? Well, track day, is, it, we race it. We race about six or seven races a year. Uh, we put about 130 hours on it a year. We change the engine usually once a season. Like, so in full day track day. Well, <laughs> endurance, we get 14 endurance, hour races. Endurance yeah. racing. Explain to me your setup here. You yeah, got? so this is a recirculating blow-off valve. I had just a normal blow-off valve on there, uh, but with just a little bit of oil in the turbo, just normal. Over a 14 hour race, it would accumulate enough dust and dirt that it clogged the radiator and just the whole side of the engine over here would just be nasty. And I'd be cleaning it every race. So actually about a month ago, I added this for our last final race just to try to keep the engine bay clean. And this is as raced. Um, you know, so it worked. Yeah, it worked. No more, it's always no nice more when you fix things and, it yeah. and they actually work. What do you, I, I realize you don't have a yeah. stock. It looks like nothing's left stock on There's here. There's nothing stock so left. So walk me through. What do you have suspension wise? Because I see yep. the brakes in there. So we Can run Porsche 996 uh, brakes all around. In the front, I run Porsche 996 uh, uprights and, and shocks and coilovers are all from 996. Um, I run my own control arm that I built, just a tubular control arm. And in the rear, it's 944 aluminum swing arms, but with boxster hubs because we used to break hubs constantly. We ran an 86 turbo hub. How have uh, you figured out all this stuff fits? Well, what's nice is Porsche doesn't change a lot over the years. Right. They might make things better and make it more complicated, but in the geometry of the front, we were everything was, was dead nuts of what it was originally. It just is now cast aluminum versus an old school wow. uh, just steel spindle. But it runs a full aero package, flat floor, carbon flat floor, full diffuser. So you have that yep. right over here. Yeah, so this is part of the front, the rear diffuser that runs back, you know, this is a total of a couple pounds. Um, and that actually starts at the rear uh, floor floor and goes all the way back. So we've have a custom fuel tank that we built that is raised up a little bit to get more room for the diffuser. This is a Porsche 9, 964 oil cooler that we run for a transmission cooler that's fed in by the NACA ducts on the windows. Man, this looks like a good time. Yeah. Very, very cool. All right, so before I even bother having these guys take the car off the lift and let me pull in, I'm gonna check to see what I actually need to do. Um, and uh, it looks like I'm thinking it's the fan switch, which is on the bottom of the radiator. So I'm going to just uh, basically jump the fan switch, which is right here somewhere. I'm going to jump it, and if the fan turns on, then that's my problem. So let's see if the fan turns on. Well, that's diagnosed. So I uh, guess I'll do that real quick and go from there. All right, so that was pretty quick. Changed out the switch and now we're letting it warm up. Also uh, changed out the crush washer and put some thread sealant on there. And now we're gonna let it warm up and see if the fans actually turn on. If not, we're just gonna connect them and make the fans always on. Cause at least now I know the fans work. Try switching the, maybe the positions. Yeah, it's about to peak. I think probably shut her down. Huh. But it's warm enough now that we can uh, see if we can get it to work. Yeah, it sucks this is leaking. Yeah, Maybe it's leaking. Try it, it work. Try it all combinations. If you touch the wires together when the when the ignition's off, it's it doesn't work, right? Yeah, That's it doesn't work. I mean, maybe I'll just connect them and just run just run fan on all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how I mean, about I'll, I'll just do that. All right, so I'm in Portland, sitting in bumper to bumper traffic, and the temp is somewhat under control. It goes up a lot higher than my anxiety would enjoy, but it drops back down from everything that 4,000 owners have told me. That's pretty normal. So yeah, we got that sort of fixed. Um, belts are squeaking like crazy now because obviously there's way more voltage draw because the fans are running now. So gotta sort that out. The belt felt tight. It might just be old. It might just need some dressing, even if that's the hacked way to do it. Um, but right now I'm headed to go pick up some wheels from my rabbit that Chambroy uh, split one of. 
and now I'm gonna get the rest of them so I can do the rest of my splits for my rabbit. And then I haven't decided what I'm gonna do tonight. I go, might go see uh, Foster Huntington and go stay in his treehouse. So it just kind of depends on what time I get out of Portland. It's it's almost six now. All right, we're here to pick up wheels from another Audi car cane addict. I want to point out that every single Audi house that I've been to, the driveway's filled with cars. Just saying. All right, it's super dark, but as you can see, there's a ton of Audis in the driveway, so clearly it's one of us. This is Drake's. Who? Howdy. How long now have you had my wheels for? A year and a half. No, October. I'm October not good 8th. at this. October 8th. Wait, you know the exact date? Just now me, I feel really just bad. Just because me and Dave were chatting a couple days ago. <laughs> and, I, and I looked at the text thread and it was like October 8th, I think, of 2021. So, oh, amazing. Yeah. So yeah, we'll ignore this one that I started to cut. <laughs> I got tire rubber all over it. But yeah. I mean, yeah. I forget how Five small, I get, forget they're how tiny. small 13s yeah, yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, they're tiny. And they'll be yeah. super small once I get them all sorted. Yep, yep. Sweet. So yeah, there's five and of them. And it's great because it doesn't even matter that they're curved. Uh, they're, they're, uh, they're in good shape. I mean, they just, yeah. you know, they're, they've got like, yeah. you know, normal shit, but. They're all going to get, they're going to get. Acid, acid into dip it. and blast those and they'll be good. There's yep. four center caps. Awesome. I don't often suggest hitting Harbor Freight, but. I needed to shoot flashlight, and I needed some ratchet straps to hold down these wheels. I wouldn't use their ratchet straps to hold down your car, but when you like double up the amount of ratchet straps, I would normally use, so it should be safe. All right, so we're gonna head to Foster Huntington's treehouse. Um, I wasn't sure if I was gonna do this because it's kind of out of the way, but I think it's gonna be fun. So we'll go there. Probably not much to see tonight because it's gonna be really dark when I get there but we'll see some stuff in the morning. So I just woke up in Foster's Treehouse, which is about like 45 minutes outside of Portland. Uh, it's amazing, it's in the middle of nowhere. And uh, I'm actually gonna see what it looks like for real for the first time, because I got in super late last night, although there is a lot of fog today. That's the other treehouse over there. That one, they call the lollipop, because it's only on one tree. It actually wobbles a ton. This one, pretty secure, it's a great little stay. One of the coolest things is a huge VHS collection. This is just some of it. So, watched a little snatch last night, falling asleep. Another record player. Another random just doodads. There's actually two doors. I haven't been out this door. As you can see, there's the other tree house. There's a hot tub down there. And over this way. By the way, that bridge right there. Wobbly bridge. I walked on it last night. Didn't really was realize it was wobbly. Oh yeah. A nice little skate ball in the front yard. And over there is his house. We'll go check that out in a second. Alright. So this is Foster Huntington. Hunting tin. Yeah. But hunting is what it's, your yeah, Instagram, Instagram is. is. So yeah. So Foster Hunting. This is your I mean this place is like a dream spot. So I don't even know where we start. You've got your main house, you got your tree houses, you've got your shop workspace area and you got your skate bowl i guess we should start what what would what, you build first the house we built the house first it was a kit house barn house my mom my boy her boyfriend and my brother and i i did some shit but they mainly did it i came from a i grew up with a family of builders so we would always just like you know build shit and that was definitely had a huge impact on me because you know i think that like you can either buy something someone else made that might kind of fit what you're looking for aesthetically and your needs and everything, or you can kind of start with a blank page and build whatever the fuck your imagination has. I woke up today in the treehouse and it was super rad. Cause like I went to sleep last night, uh, Foster gave me the quick like tour in the dark. So with like flashlights, it was really dark here. 
So I woke up and I had no idea what to expect. And it was like this like perfect like Pacific Northwest fog just hanging in the sky. Forest moon super, indoor. Yeah, super, super picturesque. Like finally got to see the bowl. And I was like, oh, this is so rad. I'm in a treehouse and I fell asleep watching VHS tapes. <laughs> so where do we start? What do you want to? Uh, let's, let's maybe go check out the tree houses first. This one's on two, tra- two trees, so it feels far more stable. Right. That one, this one is like, you know, the proper kind of proper treehouse experience. But yeah, this, there's a loft up there and then down here, so you know, like three people can stay and then got this wood stove from a boat. From uh, a boat? Yeah, this, these are originally designed for sailboats. Oh, that's right. And we got the port window that- I like that you call it the lollipop. Yeah. It's a great it's name a for it. It's a lollipop, yeah. Man, this is so cool, the view up here. The view is kind of more impressive when there's not fog, but there's like mountains over there. Yeah. The gorge in Multnomah Falls is over there. You can see Mount Hood. Oh, I didn't even realize there's this little like uh, Eden dinette oh, area right here. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. By the way, this is the part no one was expecting. Yeah. Because everyone's like, wait, you're here for a treehouse? <laughs> there's an R32 here? All right, so we'll take a little break from nerding out on treehouses and buildings and tell us about this bad boy. So this is my R32 GTR that I just got back from Tommy FBI's shop. And yeah, I always wanted a GTR and I bought it like a year and a half ago. It's, I wanted one with low miles and this has like 53,000 kilometers on it. Wow, so it's really low miles. Yeah. Which you think is tight because you're like, oh yeah, it's low miles. Yeah. And then you get it and like the fuel lines explode. Right, first because it, it's it old. wasn't ever driven. It wasn't ever driven. It's still aged. It's still aged. Yeah. yeah so. And yeah. Tommy does such a great job of just making everything look brand new. All this zinc plating and stuff. These LMs going on here soon? I, that's what I bought. I bought them and Tommy was like, dude, you can't put those on there. You got to put the... <laughs> well, I just got. He says I'm gonna let you know. You can put these on here. Yeah. He's too much of a purist. These I know. Look sick. I like that. Those are good for winter, though. Yeah. Just run some winter tires on there. All right. So let's talk about the shop space we're okay, in now. Yeah. So what I do for work is stop motion, and we can kind of come in here and. Uh, so- this was not what I was not expecting to see here. I knew you had a tree house. Yeah. You know, I knew you had the house, all the other stuff, obviously the bowl. When we walked in here last night, I was like, this is like a, like I've rented studios this size in LA and paid good money and you have one here somewhat in the sticks. I mean, yeah. granted you're only what, 40 minutes out of Portland, 40, 40 minutes but like yeah. if you're driving up your driveway, you would not, you, suspect. you get the word sticks. Sticks yeah, is definitely yeah. what this feels like. And you have a full blown studio here, green screen, so you can make everything here. Yeah. And it must be nice, like, how how many days do you go not leaving the house? Is that like a problem? Oh, like, I'll go like three or four days. Yeah, where well, you just don't leave. Yeah, I'm just no like, I don't, I don't need to, yeah. you know? So, I didn't even notice the motion control last so night. So this thing, so originally they were gonna do Jurassic Park, the first one, with stop motion. They are gonna do like the Velociraptors and T-Rexes with big ass puppets. Yeah. So they built this generation of motion control machines with enough track where they could get like the thing walking around. And then pre-production, they did it, decided to do it in CGI. Okay. So this is like the last generation of motion control machines. But yeah, here's like a set of a film we're working on. There's the bowl. Have you seen the stop motion? Do you see the pool scum? It's like the stop motion skateboarding thing we did. Um, there's the bowl what? with all the graph. <laughs> Man, that's super cool. Dude, thank you so much for the hospitality. Yeah. I appreciate it. It's been great. Thanks for letting me stick a camera in your face. Of course. I will admit, the best time we had together was when the camera was off. That's what you should do on trips like this, but you know, still got to make content for the people. Yeah, yeah. So, later, Tim. Tim. See you, buddy. <laughs> yeah, buddy. All right, so just left Foster's, man, inspirational. I don't use that word often, but uh, it just has me wanting to buy property, build a shop and a tree house and a racetrack, go move there and do cool shit. Uh, it was so rad. Anyway, um, just left there. I'm actually headed to my in-laws, so uh, gonna go just stop in, say hello. They live here in Salem, Oregon. Um, and uh, yeah, and then after that, we'll go to uh, we'll go to TT, aka Tectonics Tuning, which was like a classic Volkswagen and Audi. But for me as a kid, it was the Volkswagen spot. Uh, but for me, that brand is just something that was you know 
iconic as a young Volkswagen nerd. And then I'm going to head back to the coast, try to put on some heavy miles today. Uh, got to make it home for my boy's birthday. Now that I've got the car working well, I think I can haul ass and put down some time. All right, so we're here in uh, Sheridan, Oregon, um, home of Tectonics Tuning, which, as I said before, was this super cool brand for me as a kid. Welcome. Hey, how you doing? You know, I don't mind to put you right on camera. I'm Brian. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Having a good trip? Yeah, I'm having a good trip. Yeah. I went up to um, visit a friend just outside of Portland, oh. and uh, he had a tree house. So I went and I stayed in a tree house last oh, night so cool. and just drove a bunch of cool roads up there. Now that I got the vehicle actually operating Let's well, have a look at it. I bought it like kind of mid lockdowns and pandemic. And Oh, you're finally getting it? And I'm it? finally getting it. Yeah, I just was super busy. And I've always wanted one, but even 20 years ago, they were already worn out. I know. This one's actually not. Because they get, they get used. They do get used. Here. They do get used. I None of the Systems worked, but I fixed that all now. Yeah. So the cooling system is working now. The the uh, charging system is working. So yeah, yeah. So anyway, it's a uh, very cool. It's a cool little. It's a cool little project. It's been getting me. It's been getting me here. I mean, I've spent the past two days just fixing it along the road, right. but today has been pretty smooth sailing. So. I think I'll put, be able to put some mileage on Good. get closer to home. But I figured I'd come visit. I, what I was oh, saying yeah. to camera before you came out was that, like, as a kid, like, I got into Volkswagens in the mid-90s. Okay. Got my first Volkswagen in 97. And, like, that was, like, the first go-to was, like, okay, you got to go to Tectonics. You got to get your, your downpipe. You got to get your, you know, your exhaust to all that. Like, I've had, and I've owned a lot of Mark 1s. And that was, like, always the first thing was, like, remove the toilet bowl. Go get a Tectonics downpipe pipe set yeah. yourself up do all that so you still make that first downpipe that we oh really started it's in still, 82 yeah yeah well, let me show you around yeah you probably remember the ABD drag truck oh, of course such a oh man that's truck, so cool yeah we're rebuilding the engine for it look at the cool shifter it has and let's see a shifter Oh man, I remember this truck. I remember like, I remember this being on like the cover of European car or something. I, right. All the ABD stuff was cool. It's an Oregon owner now. Yeah, I was gonna say who owns it now. Just uh, a... Max Smith is his name, and he also owns Audubon Designs now. Also. Oh, okay. And then the red one is my Mark. That's one. your new Mark One project. Yeah. I found this door in a wrecking yard. It's almost the same, same color. color. I'm hoping wow. to find another door. Yeah. If that gives me a bit more room inside, otherwise I'm gonna mount them to the trunk with a sea sucker mount that I ordered. I'll try to make sense of that while I got a little bit of light left. Made it back to the coast. Gonna head down to Coos Bay, I think it is. Yeah, but I'm gonna try to actually make a late night tonight. Drive in through the dark. Try to make some distance. It's time to start getting home. Anyway, time to reorganize all this bullshit. all its glory. Five wheels, she suckered onto the back. By the way, these suction cups are used at like 100 plus miles an hour holding cameras, so pretty confident in them. I did add excess, I tied it off the top rack. Meh, just to be safe, but I don't think it's gonna be necessary. I made it to the California border. Oh, almost like 10 miles short, but uh, I think it's time to go to sleep.
Ah, welcome to day five, or what I plan to be the last day of the journey. Um, I'm gonna head home today. Today's actually gonna be a long drive. It's like 14 or 15 hours of driving. I'm gonna try to stay on the coast the whole way, even though it's slower, it's a much nicer drive. Um, I'm trying to get a somewhat early start today. It took a while to pack everything up. Last night, I stayed in Brookings, which is a town uh, right on the border. So I'm still in Oregon, about to cross into California. But again, when you travel in the off season, you get really good discounts on oceanfront rooms. Apparently nobody wants to stay here when it's 37 degrees out. Anyway, it's certainly a nice place to wake up to, but time to move on and uh, hit the road. By the way, you probably didn't see this last night. I installed this in the dark. Other people have used these for transporting like race wheels to the track and stuff, so works pretty well. Wow, this is seriously a dream drive. The best part too is this thing's not really fast at all. I think it probably has like 110 horse. I forget the actual number. And it is also like really badly sprung because blown struts, all the other good stuff, which makes driving it at the speed limit or just maybe 10 or 15 over the speed limit in, you know, on these roads actually makes it a lot of fun. Like it's actually quite the challenge. I find myself being like, man, I'm like, feel like I'm really pushing it. And I look down at the speed and I'm doing 65. That being said, love this thing. It's pretty rad. All right, so Foster just called me and literally was talking to me five minutes before I got to Fortuna and he said, oh, you gotta get off there. You gotta go to this town. Petrolia, and uh, yeah, it's gonna add like an hour and a half, but he, he convinced me to turn around, head back up and exit, and take a good hour and a half detour. So I'll hate him later tonight when I'm pulling into LA at three in the morning, but yeah, I still have sun, and this runs me along the what is considered the Lost Coast. I think it's gonna be rad, so we'll check it out. Let's continue on to Fur Bridge Drive. This is incredible. I mean, I, I'm the only person here. I've only passed like three or four vehicles coming in. Sheriff's office is asking for the public to keep an eye out for a missing man. For a missing Another man is mysteriously missing. disappeared somewhere in Humboldt County. You could just tell that there's something going on up here. It's their own law up there. It's their own country. Shot at, beaten, kidnapped three times. This is just crazy. I'll crack that dad joke right now, which is I'm super stoked that I found the Lost Coast. But why don't more people come here? This feels like Big Sur, but without all the tourists and without all of like the things that prevent you from getting close to the water. That being said, whoa, if these suction cups are still on now, they're not coming off. That was full torture test for these things. Full torture test for the 4000 too. It's gonna need a lot of bushings and a lot of suspension work, but it made me actually want to put full blown rally suspension in it because being able to drive through that with this. And I don't mean build a rally car, I just mean a cool driver that you can rip roads like that in. Super fun. What 
a detour that was. I don't even know if there's any footage of it because all the cards filled up and I'm trying to make a dinner date with Chuckles. So I'm trying to stay on it. But man, that was great. Like the back end of it, the roads got nice and smooth. So hold on a second. Can we take a moment to just enjoy the redwoods? Look at this. And this is just here on the 101. This isn't even like off some crazy road. Just look at those trees. Look at that. So cool. Anyway, that little detour to the Lost Coast. The roads remind me of like roads in Mexico, except it's all big trees and yeah, and a lot of green. Man, that was, that was rad. All right, this is probably the, well, this should be the last stop other than taking a piss or fueling up to get home. I'm gonna grab some uh, much needed dinner with uh, Chuckles, AKA Scott. I was supposed to be here earlier, but I took a little detour, so. <laughs> the aftermath. The, oh, the aftermath. I'm gonna make it so they can this is your, you were my last stop. It was super good. Dinner with this guy, and now I go home. Okay. It's all over. You gotta make it home first yeah, before yeah, you can brag yeah, about yeah, it. And, and what did you say about me going to the Lost Coast? And you're lucky you made it home alive. Apparently that's not a safe place to go. Yeah, and I, no, I said it was your probably one of your worst uh, adult decisions you've ever made. Uh, Great. Yes, Great. please. Ah, welcome back. So uh, you tolerated all of that. You're still here or you just walked away from your computer and it just kept playing. And for that, we thank you for the view and any of the AdSense we made off of this. Uh, next week will be This Verse Dom. <laughs> it is a return of This versus That. Super excited about this. One of the few cars to ever beat the Hoonicorn. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna go find another car to buy. Yeah. If you guys never want to see an episode like this ever again, comment below. If you enjoy this and you like watching me basically lose my mind in a car by myself and also here on the tangent set by myself as Gary sleeps, yeah, let us know that too. Anyway, um, I think we were going to make a part two of this, but I guess not. Anyway, hey Gary. You want to go get some soulless chicken? <laughs>